Now, if you're a maker, you know you're gonna need a 3D printer at some point. And for the last couple of years, the obvious choice was the Creality Ender 3, which is certainly a fine, fine 3D printer. But there are new printers emerging all the time, including this one behind me. This is the Longer LK4X. And it's an extension of the LK4 family from Longer. I wanna put it through its paces to see if it might be better than the Ender 3. Now, if you're in the market for an entry-level 3D printer, then you're probably gonna watch this, so stick around. How's it going, everybody? Steve here, and welcome back to the shop. Now, as I mentioned, Longer announced a new 3D printer, the Longer LK4X. It's the latest in the, in the LK4 family, and it has features that you won't find on any other Longer printer, but it also has features you won't find on any Ender 3 printer, including the new Neo. So, what I want to do in this video is walk you through some of the features, talk about some of the output that, that I produced using some standard benchmarks, including a Benchy, of course, because you have to print a Benchy, and at the end, give you my assessment on things that I really like about this 3D printer, as well as things I think they could maybe tweak a bit. There aren't many. And uh, then I'll give you a score at the end, and you can decide if you want to buy an Ender 3 or you want to buy this latest and greatest printer. So let's get started. So now the first thing you're gonna to have to do, of course, when you take it out of the box is put it together. The good news is, according to Longer, this printer comes 95% assembled, and it actually does, I would say, uh, because all you really need to do is stand up the gantry and turn four bolts into the bottom of the frame, and then four, four additional bolts for the uh, spool and the filament sensor, and in 10 or 15 minutes, you're ready to go and start looking at some of the features. We'll start with the display, a uh, full touchscreen display. It's big, it's color, it works really well. You can control uh, all of the temperature and fan speed from, from the tune, tuning menu. Uh, if, you, if you're using an SD card, you can select a file from the SD card from here and, and, and print it. And uh, you can also do things like leveling, both manual and automatic. Now, in my case, I did a manual level first and then I used the auto level and it worked really well. So. Uh, so that's the screen. Now we'll move over to the extruder module and rather than using a typical Bowden configuration that's so common on these entry level printers, the LK4X uses a direct drive uh, two gear configuration uh, to push filament through at a five to one gear ratio. Really welcome feature in a printer in this, in this price range. Uh, because aside from nor using standard filament, what it allows you to do is print flexible filaments with ease, including things like TPU, which is notoriously hard sometimes to, to get to print. Good luck doing it on any Bowden configuration. So if that's what you want to do, this is the one for you. Uh, also on the extruder module, you'll see the 3D touch, which is used for automatic leveling. Uh, works really well. And again, it's welcome in any printer in this price range. Now, moving on to the bed, the LK4X comes with a heated plate, of course, with a PEI sheet that's held on there with a magnetic plate. And of course, it works really well. Uh, underneath each corner, you have a manual adjuster for doing manual leveling. And no printer would be worth its weight if it wasn't accurate. So I set the temperature of the heat plate to 60 degrees Celsius and measured 57.8, which I'd say is pretty accurate. So you're not gonna be disappointed here with the bed. Now, last thing we're gonna look at here is the interfacing to the printer. And of course the LK4X comes with a USB slot for direct connection uh, to things like Cura, also an SD slot if you're shuttling files back and forth on a card. Now, this SD slot is small and it, it's actually under the bed, so it can be a little tedious to get to. And the USB port, uh, I wasn't able to make it work directly to Cura on my Mac, but I think that's a function of all the security that Apple has added recently to the operating system. So I wouldn't base it on that. It did work on my Windows machine though, so uh, no problem there. All right, let's take a look at some of the results. Now, all of the benchmarks I'm gonna show you here came from the Matter Hackers benchmark suite for 3D printers. And uh, the printer itself was all set to factory defaults. I haven't made any adjustments to the printer and Cura, was, which I did use to, to, to print these, was also set to its standard defaults, which is, uh, which is the standard output at 0.2 millimeters uh, uh, layers and so there's no magic here this is all just defaults and the first 
test is the one millimeter shell and you can see it draws, uh, it prints multiple angles around the corner, draws some circles in the back and uh, some text in the front. The, the black here incidentally is because I switched filament and I didn't really clean the extruder very well when I changed it. So uh, that's not normal, but it, it's fine. Uh, you can see the, the letters here, they look fairly crisp and the corners all look nice and square. Uh, perhaps a little bit of overshoot on the, on the corners, uh, but all of that stuff you can adjust either in the laser itself or with Cura. Uh, next, I did a suspension test. Now, normally this would, this would print in that direction and it's, what it measures is the amount of filament you can suspend without support. So the, the longer this is, the more it tends to sway down. And, and you can see there's certainly some sway there, but it isn't very bad, actually. This is, this is pretty impressive, what it, what it did here, again, with, with defaults. So uh, I would call that a real victory. Uh, next is the suspension test. And it, what it does without support is it tries to print at particular angles and you can see them there up to 70 degrees and what you're looking for on the is on the bottom you're looking for places where where the print didn't didn't print very well and you certainly won't see it on this one so again another another victory uh, the negative space test measures what, what it draws is it what it does is prints these pins in the holes and a successively smaller hole to make the pin tighter and tighter so the first two uh, fall out and you can see the, the measurements down, down the side here. Sorry, I should have used a different color than yellow, but, but uh, the first two obviously fell out and it will on most printers. The third one is hit or, or, is hit or miss on, on some 3D printers. It may or may not uh, be loose and the next two are a little tight. And there may be a bit of over extrusion on this, which is why those would be a little tight. Uh, I did a calibration cube, of course, uh, 20 by 20 uh, by 20 millimeter cube, and it came out it came out really nice, actually. Uh, the corners are relatively sharp, and if you look at the uh, the measurements, uh, it's about a, out by about a tenth of a millimeter plus or minus on all sides. So it's it's pretty good, and you can see the the measurement up above here. And finally, of course, I did a Benchy. Now this may actually be the best Benchy I've ever seen on a, on a standard uncalibrated 3D printer. And if I can get a little more light on it here, you will see the sides are very smooth. The holes, there's not a lot of ringing around the holes. And if you look particularly on the end, you'll see, uh, that the lettering there is almost readable to the human eye. If you put a micro, if you put this under a magnifying glass, you'll actually be able to read those letters. Uh, that is really, really impressive. Uh, you wouldn't expect to see that uh, with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle at 0.2 millimeter layer height uh, in a, you know, a, a 3D printer that's a couple hundred dollars. So uh, this is a victory. All right, so you saw the results and, and they were great. This is a nice little printer. And uh, I wanna call out a couple of things that I think they did really well on this printer, as well as a couple things I think that maybe they could improve on to make this an even better printer. So on the pro side, uh, the assembly has to be called out as one of the easiest printers I've ever seen to assemble. They said it was 93% complete in the box and I took it out of the box and literally turned in eight bolts and in 10-15 minutes tops uh, I had the printer up and running. Now one caution which has nothing to do with assembly but uh, I'll call it out here. You need to make sure you set the line voltage on the power supply correctly before you plug it in. Uh, there's a sticker on the power supply that you have to peel off if you're switching it and uh, I would say pull it off regardless. Uh, to make sure your line voltage is set correctly. It's 120 volts, obviously, in North America and 220 in most other places, but make sure you do that before you plug it in. Uh, next on the list here, the out-of-the-box accuracy and print quality of this printer is amazing. 
Uh, very rarely will you be able to use a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and 0.2 millimeter layer height and, and print a Benchy as good as the one I saw here where you could read the lettering on the back of the boat. It's just amazing that they were able to do that. So they've definitely paid attention to a lot of the inaccuracy and vibration in the printer. Uh, and last on the, on the pro side here, this printer is is almost silent. Even the cooling fans run very quietly. So uh, you saw it running through most of the first part of the video and it's literally two feet from the microphone here. So, uh, you know, and it was not Im imposing on, on the uh, recording quality. So uh, again, good on them. Now on the con side, there were, I'll say three things that I think they could do better. The touchscreen sensitivity can be a bit tedious, especially if you have, you know, fat calloused fingers like I have, uh, these capacitive displays sometimes don't work very well. Uh, I ran into a few problems and, and occasionally was pushing uh, aimlessly on the, on the display to get it to respond. Uh, next on the list, the SD card being right in front underneath the bed. If the bed is fully forward, uh, getting in and out of uh, underneath there to get the SD cards in and out of that slot can be tricky. Uh, now, if you're using USB, these first two issues aren't really a problem because you don't care about the display generally and the SD card slot is not used if you're using the USB. So uh, maybe non-issues for most people. Uh, last on the list here, the bed might be a bit small for some. It's 220 millimeters square and for 90% of what you print, it's probably going to be fine. But a 300 by 300 millimeter bed might make all the difference to some people. So uh, it would be nice if there was uh, a max version of, of this printer at 300 by 300 or even 400 by 400 would be an amazing printer uh, because otherwise this printer is just exceptional. All right, so we can wind down here. Really nice printer. I would definitely recommend this if you're looking for an entry level printer. Uh, I'll put a couple of links down below. The first one is a link to the Matter Hackers benchmark tests, and uh, you can go try those on your own printer. Or uh, if you do buy one of these printers, you can certainly ver verify my results. Uh, the next link down there is an affiliate link. If you're looking to actually buy one of these, please use that link. It'll give you a bit of a discount and it'll help out the channel. And finally, I'll put a video up in the corner. As always, uh, you can go watch that and I'll see you over there. Uh, otherwise, get out there and make your world. And if you need to use a 3D printer to help you with that, you might want to consider the longer LK4X. And I'll see you next time.